So that was one change management, changing the mindset of people, changing the culture of the organization, changing some of the rules and the fundamental rules. No? In an organization where the merit, the merit was not known, no? the promotions were based on seniority, so we had to do promotions based on merit. That's the kind of thing. Instance becoming leaders, and those kind of changes were done. So that was one experience. The second was in uh, AP. No, we took over, and we were taking the family and organizations, and then doing the empowerment side. Why is silence? Why is silence? Why is silence? family and company doing a transparent empowerment survey with the help of the Kulay Pandita. That is one change. How did we do that? How did we know this? Measuring the empowerment status, articulating, sharing, and then doing some action. And in the same organization, another change management we did with the entire brand later it was uh, transferred to the entire brands is moving away from functional organization to process-based organization. So we created a process-based organization where there's no choice, there's no commercial, there's no production, there's no maintenance. So the change management was I mean, very challenging, very challenging thing is, I mean, the team leaders were from, I mean, accepting somebody who never worked in my discipline. HR person reporting the production man, production man is reporting the maintenance man, he was the leader. So the multi skilling, the low cost of production, Process based training to the other team. The last change that I have experienced is in Malaysia. We went there to take over the assets of a sick unit. Sick, it was poor, low moral. So we went there, an unknown country, no land base, we don't know the land base. We went there, we were asked to take over all the 7,500 people there without verifying whether they're good or bad. Without assessing whether they require them or not. And that was the mandate given to us. And in no intellect style, you know, do it fast. Don't be proud. We have one example. This change management is difficult here because we are dealing in a foreign land. People with eight nationalities speaking 21 languages working there. Eight nationalities and 21 languages working there. And language is a barrier. Without disturbing the basic framework of the culture, do things faster. The same people, without taking too many people from India, not any government from India, only 18 of them went there, worked with the 7,500 people, and then we changed. So, in all the three changes, what one important thing I think is, I mean, I think with my own style, is you should be able to sell properly. You should be able to sell properly. To do the telling and selling, we got the telling and selling, we got that thing and selling. We need people who are willing, people who are willing to pay, people who know how to change, and do that. Finally, we can get them to with the change, and we can tell them. That is the learning of my experience. Let the way that puts it to us. Thank you. 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 Started off with Gil, who was excellent. So, luckily, he's moved away from that. So, thank you, GP. That was very educational and educational for us. Um, next time, I'll come to one of my questions. Your views. But that's being the CEO of a business. So, he's, he's not wearing the CEO hat. He's not like the rest of us who are the Since the man who started I'm going to start with that first bit, which is around something that about. I, I'm, uh, I'm a huge critic fan. That probably means that I'm like you know, most people in the audience here. I'm also very passionate about writing. And, and, and these two came together for me and made for a fairly memorable moment when I managed to get Rahul Dravid, who's a bit of a hero for me, to write the foreword for my second book, which is, you know, at one stage that looked impossible. So maybe there's a message in it for all of us, which is, you know, if you just dream the impossible, it just happens sometimes. So maybe there's something in it for all of us. Um, what I'm going to do is to really share four lessons in leading change and driving transformation. 
lessons that I've learned, uh, lessons that made a difference to my life, and hopefully, uh, some. Lessons that you know, hopefully you can uh, take away with you. And to do that, uh, I'm going to try and first tell you a little story. Um, it's a story that's set in Gujarat, and it's amazing how when we talk about when we talk about leading change, stories tend to go towards Gujarat. But you know, there's another story there. And this is really um, a story of what happened when the Parsis first came to India. It's set in I think seventh or eighth century. And the story goes that this group of Zoroastrians actually landed in a place called Sanjil in Gujarat, and they, they turned up in the court of the ruling um, king called Jadi Rana, and they, you know, they wanted asylum over there. The king looked at them, you know, warrior like, good looking, tall, handsome, well built people, and not sure if he wanted them to stay on in his kingdom. So, but he was, of course, you know, not sure how to say it. So he managed to get one of his courtiers to bring a bowl of milk, uh, and the bowl was full to the brim. Uh, and he took So here are the four lessons that I want you to take. The first one is this. If you're trying to write change, remember this, that trouble will always be there. You might think that there's this great need for change. I want to drive this change. Chances are the team, the organization, doesn't necessarily see the same need for change. So it's always important for you to ensure that you create that, that need for change, create that case for change, and don't assume that everybody else shares your sense of that need for change. Uh, don't just take it for granted. And I think you've got to first establish that case. And don't feel bad if you feel that, you know, you're the London Joy, see the need for change, and you're the only man who feels that. Cup is always full. Lesson number two. I think it's a great idea for you if you're like sugar trying to drive the change. You need a spoon. You need a stirrer. You need someone or something willing to see things out there. It's not something that you might be able to do yourself. You need uh, that partner in crime. You could be a CEO. It could be an HR director. It could be be a sales guy. It could be one person in your organization who you see as being capable of driving the change. And you need that spirit. Remember, uh, you'll always run the risk of saying that, you know what, if I shake things up, maybe something will spill. And then if you're scared, Uh, 
Let's take that point. 